I am a domestic wannabe. I am currently doing a new cleaning challenge that involves using index cards to keep track of what I'm deep cleaning throughout my house. If you followed me for a while, you would know I have followed several cre- other amazing creators cleaning methods, including the Fly Ladies, who I spent the most time using, Clean Mama and the Clutter Bug, just to name a few. I have taken so much inspiration from them and found I need to just make something a little bit more me. Enter hearing about about index cards as a way of organizing what I need to do. I have created this based on my inspiration from other creators. So you might see some things that are pretty redundant. And the reason you will see things that are redundant is because their methods work. It is just fine tuning it to make it work for me. And maybe this will work for some of you too. So thank you so much for following along with me. I am currently on week four, which week four of my system is completing an easy room. I want to remind you, my system is flexible. So you could actually stand in your house and see what room just needs to be done this week. What room needs attention? And you could completely change the system based on that need for any week throughout my whole plan. It is a 12 week plan. And for me, I wanted to do an easy room. Well, my fridge was in dire need of a clean out. Then what better way is it to do an easy room than to focus on my fridge? Well, you can't do the fridge without doing the freezer and I can't do my fridge and freezer without also doing my outside freezer. So my my easy room this week turned into a very, very focused clean of the fridge and freezer. And I could not be happier that I did this. So the first thing I do when I do my fridge and freezer is I go through and I check expiration dates. I pare things down. I check for mold, especially on my cheese. Um, And I reposition things that I know need to be eaten up to that second shelf. So if it needs to be eaten like a leftover, I put it up there. So uh, it's kind of in my eye range and I, well, eat it. I also have a condiment obsession. I love condiments, and um, if if a meal can have a condiment, I'm going to put it on there. Um, I'm also Minnesotan, so ranch is the number one condiment in our house, and it gets used a lot, and it's usually on uh, our grocery list all the time. I am going through checking out expiration dates, reorganizing things so I know that things that need to get used because the expiration date's coming up gets used and I'm getting rid of things that just haven't been eaten in a while meaning if I keep re I keep moving it around from shelf to shelf maybe it's just time to go and we're not going to eat it while I was doing this clean out I realized how much food we really do have in our fridge and our freezers and that inspired me to do my February challenge of feeding my family on a hundred and fifty dollar budget The goal of that was to focus on decluttering my fridge and my freezer, getting, using what we have because things have been getting buried lately and then they get forgotten about. And I have quite a bit of meat in our fridge or in our freezers that needs to get used up. So I thought, you know, it's not, it doesn't seem that unreasonable to do $150 for the month to feed our family of three. I'm doing my voiceover work on February 12th. You guys, it is more challenging than I had anticipated. And you'll hear all about that in another video and as well as I am um, making YouTube shorts. I'm diving into the world of YouTube shorts with this challenge as well. So you can check out those those shorts to get some recipe ideas and see how I am utilizing our food.
So as you can see in the freezer, everything is piled up. It is hard to get at anything. And basically the only thing that we have access to is chicken nuggets, ice cream, and tater tots. So I decided I had to pull everything out. And as I did that, I had actually purchased these bins and you will see a video as to why I purchased these bins in a little bit. And it is not for this freezer. But these bins fit perfectly on two of the shelves of the freezer. So I bought them for another reason, and the reason is inspired by a premiere of one of my videos, and one of you had the best idea that was mind-blowing to me, and I immediately went to the dollar store and got some bins, and you will see that idea soon. But the idea was put on pause because these bins fit perfectly in the freezer and I ended up using them all for the freezers instead and you will see that. I do use freezer bags and um, freezer containers but it doesn't always, if you don't get the air out, you can get freezer burn and there's two different kinds. I wanted to show you here on the front it is ice crystals. That is actually just moisture that was in the bag that froze down and obviously turned to ice. And then there is on this other side of this chicken breast, that is freezer burn. You can see it's kind of a chapped skin look. That chicken breast definitely has freezer burn on it. So that is the difference between just ice crystals and freezer burn. Before I became seasoned in the kitchen, I, um, I would have looked at the ice crystals and thought freezer burn and thrown away the food. But that is not freezer burn. So make sure you're looking at the meat itself. If it looks all chapped and dry, like dry skin, it's freezer burn and you can decide what to do next. Now I did elect to actually cut that freezer burn off and use those chicken breasts for myself for a meal and they were just fine. Um, it wasn't a lot of freezer burn and normally I would toss it but uh, I'm now on a $150 budget for the month so I put them to use. So these bins, oh my goodness this is a game changer for this freezer. I moved things that didn't need to be in this freezer out to the outside freezer. Um, I hated how dark the freezer was and realized the light bulb was out, but just didn't have access because I had that pile of food. So I went down to my light bulb closet where I thought I had an extra appliance light bulb. Turned out I did not. So I had a different idea. I would just use the light bulb from the fridge and move it over, but then I just nudged the freezer one and it turned back on. So then I put the freezer the fridge ball back in. Anyway, I now have light in the freezer. It turned out it was just bumped and it had turned off. So great news for me. I don't even have to spend money on a new light bulb, which I wouldn't have taken from my $150 budget because the even if it's like $1.50 for a light bulb, I, I, could, I, can't, I can't squeeze that out of my $150. But these bins turned out so great. So I put meat and veggies that need to get used in the lower shelf. And then on the top shelf, I put all the items that we like meat, uh, chicken nuggets, things like that. So we have easy access. I just have to pull out the bin. I can find exactly what I need to use and knowing what's on that top shelf needs to get used first has helped me with basically like lunch planning, things like that. Well, there, to make sure that freeze, that inside freezer was not completely stocked to the brim, I took some of the ice cream things to the outside and it's time to re re uh distribute what is in here and just go through everything so i grabbed the rest of the bins i had again bought for another project but they are finding a new home in this freezer and i couldn't be happier to tell you the truth and i started organizing the freezer moving things around and kind of taking inventory of what i have and what needs to get used first now there are some things that I am questioning how old they are. You will see there's a lot of lists with freezer recommendations for how long things can last in the freezer. And I've heard different things, but this is kind of the general like rule of thumb I go by, and I could be very off, but if it's in the freezer, it, it is safe to eat, even if it's older than that expiration date but the flavor and the texture can change and kind of become less quality. So it might not be as good as you're anticipating it to be, but it should be safe to eat um, if it's been in longer. So a lot of things will say like three months, you know, like ground beef, three to six months, that kind of thing. You can eat ground beef and things if it's packaged appropriately. It doesn't have that freezer burn. You can eat it after that date. It just not, might not be as good. And that's kind of the rule of thumb that I live by. So if it looks good, if it smells fine, we will eat it. 
if it doesn't look good and it does not smell good, it's going to go in the trash. So some of these things I know um, might not be great in here. So we'll find out. Now, if you watched, I did my first, one of my first YouTube shorts with this recipe right here. And again, it was the inspiration for the challenge that I am starting for the month of February. And you guys, it is a challenge. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of your day and spending it with me. If you're following along, week five, we are repeating the most stressful room, which for me will be the first time jumping into the kitchen aside from my easy... <laughs> easy room version of doing the fridge and freezer. We're jumping back into the kitchen and we are going to work on deep cleaning this space to go along with this fridge and freezer challenge. Thank you so much for watching and spending a little bit of your day with me and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Or a part of this